let's start to actually uh, deconstruct this geometry. Okay, so the objective, like you saw in that image, is to create circles. Okay, so by now you're probably with me on the fact that we're using the grid to locate the circles, right? By now you probably figured that out. Um, <clears throat> so this grid has information that it generates that we can use to do that. Um, if you look on the output side, right, so we, we fed this information into the input, it ran the process of creating a rectangular grid, and it gave us two things. What two things did it give us? It gave us cells, and it gave us points, okay? The, this is where you're going to have to start really focusing on the information that's going through. Um, we're going to go back to input here, and we're going to use the panel, but we're going to use it as a reader, not a, not a, a, a primitive generator. Right, primitive meaning like a, a number input or a text input, okay? So basically this panel can either create information or it can read information. So when you plug the panel in, this is what you can see. So this is where we start to get into a little bit of programming, okay? All right, I see a lot of scared faces. But anyway, this information, you won't see too much of that information, but you need to understand how it works, okay? These points, basically, uh, it's creating 25 separate points. Why is it creating 25 separate points? How many times, or how many intersections there are in the grid? Yeah. That's why. That's how many intersections there are in the grid. So get used to the relationship to your input values, right? Four cells will give you five points, right? Because you've got one, two, three, four cells, and then you have one, two, three, four, five points, okay? You're going to see a lot of that. I guarantee you for the vast majority of us, you're going to look at that at some point and say, what's going on? And then you're going to smack yourself in the forehead and say, oh, yeah, it's that, okay? So, um... <clears throat> Basically, uh, those five points are red. This is the one part that where programming really makes it confusing to a user, you know, like us, a casual user, not a programmer. The points are red in an index value indicative of how it's uh, of how it's organized to be a programming language, which means the first index value in a list starts at zero. Does it have to? Can we change that? Not that I know of. I think you have to live with it. Yeah. So it's going to throw you off, right? So just like, you know, five points in a four point or in a four cell grid, um, you've got five values, but it starts from zero and it ends at four. Okay. So that's what you're seeing up here. So your first set of points is index value zero, one, two, three, and four. There are five of them, five of them, but you've only got, uh, you only go up to the fourth index, index value. All right. Why is that important? Okay, the reason that's important is because when you um, want to assign geometry to something, it assigns it in order via the index values. Okay, so um, I'm going to drop something in that you can, you can follow along with, or you don't have to, but I'm going to use this a lot. Under display and vector, you can um, basically input the points that you want to display and it will give you numerical values on top of the, uh, the grid that you can read. And I'm going to blow it up really big here with a, a, a number slider, 0 to 5. There you go. Okay. Is this what you expected? No. Yeah, it's probably not what you expected, okay? Um, Grasshopper will, um, if you, what's the best way to describe this? Okay, I got it. So uh, basically, Grasshopper has to read everything on a coordinate grid. 
which means there has to be a competing grid system somewhere. Okay, so um, if any of you took, uh, I don't know where that would fall in if it's trig or calculus, but when you're going through matrices, right? So like basically a matrix is made up of two competing systems that fall into the structure of what creates what it is. And it's, it's like a basic explanation, I guess. Um, but anyway, that's the way I like to describe it as a metaphor for this. Okay, so the matrix here has an X direction and it has a Y direction. Okay, so when you're reviewing the information from uh, a cell, right, it's going to read the X direction as a set and then it will multiply that in the Y direction as sets, plural. Does that make sense? Maybe that was a terrible metaphor. Probably was. I probably didn't even explain it right. But um, the most important part of this is to understand that there are sets of information that are multiplied depending on which way you structure it. Okay? Um, what's that? I thought I could explanation, but I don't. Okay. Yeah, if you can help me out, help me out, because I don't. I don't do that much math anymore. Anyway, so um, this information right now is reading left to right, and then it duplicates vertically across the grid, right? So you can think of that as either X or Y, or if you're familiar with, you know, warped surfaces and stuff in three-dimensional forms, the U and V, right? They're all, they're all kind of correlated in a, a cross-datum sort of system, binary in a sense. Um, but... Um, are you guys following? Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, Maybe we can move some tables up closer next time. All right, so uh, let me get to the meat of this, right? So this information right now, it's structured into packets of five, right? And we have five packets of five. Um, notice how we have zero, one, two, three, four in the first packet. So while you're seeing this information as zero, 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 zero at the bottom, I don't know about you, but my gut reaction is to say these four numbers are one list, right? Because they're all the same. They're all zero. That's what I would think. Maybe I'm just confusing you by saying that, but I would think that if I applied something to the, the zero list, it's going to go to those. That's not the case. It's actually going to go zero, one, two, three, four vertically. Okay? But don't worry so much about that because what's going to happen is when we take a circle and we apply it to all of them, it's going to kind of look just like circles on a grid. Let's do it. Um, so I'll go up to curve and primitive, and I'm going to uh, grab this circle. So there are a bunch of different types of circles, but this one with the orange background, that's just a basic circle with two inputs. Okay, it has a plane, which you can assume to be the same as a point in space. In some cases, not all. Um, and then a radius. It's the simplest fo form of circle that you can create. Okay, so the point then, you can just pull from the point's input. So now you've kind of come full circle. Uh, um, and, and now you've constructed geometry, you deconstructed geometry, and you've reconstructed geometry. So that's our workflow for the rest of the semester. That's what we're going to be doing. We're doing circles all semester long. No. <laughs> all right. So uh, now let's get to the other cool stuff, right? So I talked about modifying that geometry and, and what's going to actually, you know, make this interesting, right? So uh, first and foremost, the, the radius input right now is a default value of 1. Um, with that default value, um, we can override that with either a singular different number or we can create a, a list of numbers that are going to modify it. Okay, so I'm going to borrow another panel from the params tab input menu. Yeah, 
I said menu, but I meant panel. Anyway, um, this in, now we're actually using this panel in a different way. We're creating an input with it. Okay, so um, you need to know some rules about it, and and you're all going to screw it up at some point. It took me like a year to get like, you know, like that. Like I could just build a panel, no problem. But um, basically, if I double click that and I type in a number, so right now all of my circles are a radius value of one. But let's say I want them to be 1.5, right? One and a half times their actual size that they are now. I can take that panel and I can plug it into the R value and those circles become larger. Kind of getting it? Okay. Now, what happens if I need it to have multiple numbers, right? The syntax is incredibly important because if I double, uh, double click that and let's say I'm trying to recreate a list, right? See how it's like index zero has a number and then index two has an, or one has a number. Um, I'm going to try and do that right now and say I want this one to be 1.5 and then I want the next set to be 0.75 and I hit OK. And then it gives me this red error. Yeah, the syntax is wrong. Because this panel, and we're getting into some jargon here, maybe I'm just confusing you, but this panel will read uh, a singular line of data as either an integer, or rather um, either a float number, or, um, or it'll read it as a string, which in programming terms is basically text, right? Text that's read as text, not as a command. Um, so. In order to make this understand it as a list, we have to right click and turn off uh, multi-line data. So you'll see that it's going to start to format it a little bit. It's going to look like this, where it's a list of information with a, a darker um, tab at the top. And then it's going to say 1.5 and then 0.75. Now you can see that the circles at the bottom are large and the rest of them are small. So um, before I close this video and we start going into dynamic patterning, who here can deduce why the small circles are large and or the, the bottom circles are large and the top circles are small? That's absolutely correct. That's correct. Right, because we gave it, and if you look very closely at um, the index values, right, the first index of 0 is 1.5, and that's those right there. And then index 1 is correctly set at 0.75. And then after that, it doesn't know what to do. So it just takes the last number that was present in the set and, and repeats it. You guys get it? Yeah, at least you know your your brain is saying like, yeah, yeah I can kind of get that. Yeah. All right. At this stage, guys, you don't need to be able to reproduce this stuff on command. Okay. I want you to feel comfortable understanding the principle of the thing, and then we'll fumble around a little bit to recreate it as a team. So it, it changes um, the dynamic nature of the panel to basically read it as a list. Yep. Yeah. You just can't hit enter and then create nothing underneath or else it's not going to do anything for you. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right, so let me stop this video then and uh, we'll move on to dynamic patterning next.